So Jacob, you talk about geothermal as being a really efficient way of heating and cooling a building. What do you mean by that? So again, because we're moving heat, not creating heat, our efficiencies are much higher than with a traditional system like a boiler or furnace. So instead of 80 or 90% efficiency, our heating efficiencies can get up to 400, 450%, and our cooling efficiencies can be anywhere from six to 900%. So we typically use 70% less energy than any other traditional system. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. One of our first episodes in our very first season was on geothermal heating and cooling, and it's been one of our most popular videos over the years. Fast forward almost three years, and we found the absolute sweet spot for geothermal heating and cooling in the Mosaic Center, an amazing net zero office building that pairs solar PV with geo. Jacob Komar of Revolve Engineering gives us a quick explainer on how it works. So geothermal is basically a renewable mechanical system that takes advantage of the stable earth temperature below the frost line. So in Alberta, the ground temperature is six to eight degrees year round. So we tap into that by installing a vertical or horizontal heat exchanger with basically pipes in the ground that can extract heat from the ground in heating and reject heat into the ground in cooling. And we use heat pumps within the building to aid that process, the heat pumps basically upgrade that heat. Um, it's sort of like the way your fridge works in that it cools the stuff inside your fridge by heating up your home. The geo exchange system consists of 32 holes drilled 70 meters deep connected by pipes. It's under the parking lot on the north side of the building. About two kilometers of pipe go deep into the ground and come into the building's mechanical room where they connect to the ground source heat pump. So here we are in the geomechanical room. Um, these are the manifolds. These are the pipes that come back from the ground. You can see there's five from the five groups. Yeah. So we come back from the ground and we actually feed right into the main heat pump loop. And so there's two distinct loops. And this heat pump loop feeds the heat pumps that provide the heating and cooling in this building. So there's, this is the heat pump that provides the hot water for the in-floor system. And then the heat pumps here behind us is are for the variable refrigerant system that um, heats and cools the entire office building. Unlike homes in northern cities, this super efficient office building requires cooling at times. The geo exchange system combines heating and cooling in one system, creating a renewable energy sweet spot. So geothermal systems have typically higher upfront costs but where you make that back is on lower maintenance costs and lower operating costs where you save on your energy bills. Um, the, where it makes the most sense is on bigger commercial buildings. So the bigger the building, um, the better the payback will be. And in some cases, the geothermal, geothermal system might actually be cheaper than a traditional system. The killer app in this case is that the Mosaic Center combines a very efficient net zero office building with a 213 kilowatt solar PV system. Okay, Jacob, we're on the roof of the Mosaic Center now amongst all these amazing uh, solar modules. Um, solar is a great companion uh, with geothermal. Explain the connection and why it works so well in this case. Well, exactly, and I think the key is that geothermal moves your heating and cooling to an electric source, which the solar panels provide electricity, so it's a natural tie-in. But the, the bigger thing is that geothermal system uses so much less energy than any other system that it re actually reduces the amount of solar PV that you would need. Right. So for example, for this building, by using the geothermal system, which was $80,000 more expensive than the next system, we actually saved $160,000 or 40 kilowatts of PV that we would have had to have on this roof. And so we still saved $80,000 um, and we actually wouldn't have had enough room for the rest of the PV panels on this roof. So um, for commercial buildings, it's tough to reach net zero without actually using geo. All of this, plus a 50% accelerated capital cost depreciation rate for renewable energy, 
means the system pays for itself fast. All of a sudden, a net zero office building seems like a good idea, especially when you consider the building solar will generate its own electricity for the next 30 years. As the heat pumps used for geosystems become more and more efficient, look for geothermal to become more common. So how much geothermal is there in play right now and what is the potential for it? So in Alberta, there's about 2,000 geothermal installs and Canada-wide there's over 60,000. Um, in the States, it's even more common. Um, the potential is absolutely huge. Um, I think for commercial buildings, the, the paybacks and the attractiveness is already there. Um, for residential buildings, until natural gas prices bounce back, it's going to be a tougher sell. But my guess is in 5, 10, 15 years, when fossil fuels, we're going to want to use a lot less fossil fuels, there's not a single building that won't at least consider geothermal. To learn more about geothermal and the Mosaic Center, head to greenenergyfutures.ca. We've got a photo gallery, a podcast, and a blog. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. Stick around to the end for the credits and a link to one of our favorites. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. With the Mosaic Center, we've definitely found a sweet spot for geothermal heating and cooling systems. To learn more about net zero office buildings, check out our episode on the amazing Mosaic Center. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a new video every two weeks.